it's Saturday, 14th of October 2017, and today we are in South East London, where we'll be meeting the man that many Sierra Leoneans believe to be the only hope for Sierra Leone's uh, prosperity and future. He is Dr. Kande Yumkela, the man people believe that um, is capable of bringing much needed economic development to the country after 40 years of economic decline. Dr. Kande Yumkela worked for 15 years for the United Nations, championing global energy challenge, and also bringing industrialization to several developing countries. But now he said he's ready for the biggest challenge of his life. He wants to be the president of Sierra Leone. Will he win the elections next year? We've, we've come to South East London to find out. Okay. Dr. Kande Yumkela, good afternoon to you. And uh, it's always nice to have you here at the Telegraph. Thank you very much. Um, two years ago, you came to the UK um, to meet your supporters and um, to talk to them about your dreams, your aspirations, um, especially of leading the um, opposition, SLPP, to next year's election. And uh, of course, things have changed. And um, um, today, you are in London again to meet your supporters on their new banner, a different banner, and with a different message. What has changed and what is that message? Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me time indeed. I remember a wonderful discussion. It's almost two and a half years ago actually. And uh, I was full of enthusiasm, big dreams then. And what I can tell you is that two things haven't changed. My dreams for Sierra Leone are even more solid now because I see the necessity for change that I sense then, now I know it is necessary. Second, what has not changed, I came under the banner of KKY movement at that time, Kande Kole Inkela movement. Today I'm back here under that banner. So first point is that uh, the Kande Yunkela movement has survived three and a half years. We have been able to build an infrastructure across Sierra Leone. We have been able to withstand the intimidation and brutalization that we have experienced in our country from many forces, including forces within uh, SFPP. Very brutal, violent forces. And it has strengthened our resolve that we should, in fact, be even more aggressive, more ambitious about bringing change to our country. So that has remained the same, but if anything, strengthened. What has changed is that, yes, I broke away from SLPP, along with many very prominent SLPP individuals. Since I left SLPP every week, there are hundreds of people leaving SLPP too. And for me, it is a demonstration of what I stand for. That yes, we will not settle for the lowest common denominator. That yes, we want real change. And that real change means that you yourself, as an individual, must be able to take bold stands and draw a line in the sand that there are certain principles we will never surrender, we will never, we will never uh, 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 compromise. So I, give, I, I, I am very grateful to the Kanda Yunkela movement, three and a half years, almost four, surviving, learning uh, the processes. What has also changed is that I've learned a lot. There's nothing like learning by doing. There's nothing like being in African politics and being kicked around, maligned, abused, and then recognizing that your only way you should approach politics if we want real change and transformation is to remain true to your principles, that you don't compromise. There's a limit to what you compromise. Yes, politics is the, is the game of the possible. You have to negotiate. It's not all, always your way. But there has to be certain limits. And in our country, all men, you know, they have an attitude where they say, Naphobia. Naphobia simply means become a sycophant, accept the status quo, and toe the line. Well, if we do that for the next 50 years, we will remain at the bottom of the human development index. The changes we need are so urgent and crucial that there is no time to waste. One thing I just saw last week, and I was reading it again this morning, the Guardian wrote an article based on a WHO new report. The worst place to be a young man is Sierra Leone. Yeah. The two years ago, they said the worst place to be a mother is Sierra Leone. Why should Sierra Leone always be the worst? 
That is what I don't agree with. Well, I think what's going to be the challenge for you for next year, March 20, uh, 2018. The challenge for you is that there are many senior buildings who believe, whether rightly or wrongly, that the ruling APC party has done enough in terms of development to deserve a third, uh, another five years to complete the work that you're doing. How are you going to convince those people to vote for you? I'm a realist. I have been in the country now continuously two years, going around the country. I have been an expert in development now over two decades. Uh, APC has done some good, yeah, and I have maintained. We cannot throw the baby out with the bath. We'll sift through and look at the good they've done. We will also look at the cost of doing it. So we talk about value for money. And then we also look at the problems that exist. And some of these problems we have to put in a 20-year perspective. If we have one of the worst and highest youth unemployment rates in Africa, they may have done well, but not well enough. If we still have uh, the highest maternal mortality rate in the world, they found it, it is still there. It's not fixed. If they've invested a lot in certain sectors, we have to ask, what is the trade-off? Education is crumbling, completely crumbling. In fact, what I will do is declare an education emergency. If we don't fix education, when our population doubles in the next 30, 35 years, there will be even more instability in our country, including our neighboring countries. So it is always relative. When people tell me in Africa, you know, I've gone through this in my work in Africa, across African countries. When they tell me, we are doing very well. I say, but compared to whom and compared to what? What are your comparators? I have gone to countries like Cambodia, Vietnam, where there was war, where over a million people died. Today they manufacture Nike, uh, Gucci and so on, and they export to the first world. They are generating jobs, they have factories, they are self-sufficient in rice production. What are you talking about that you've done well? You are still at the bottom of the hill. 70% of the people in Sierra Leone live below $2 a day. What are you talking about that you've done well? No! Our people live in misery. I'm not saying it. That's what the Guardian, that's what WHO and others are reporting. We have some of the worst indicators you can think about. So yes, in 20 years we've done reasonably well, but by gosh, not as well as we should do. We are not fulfilling our potential. That's why we need change. That's why you need new thinking, new expertise, new international goodwill to take us to the level where we, we should be, because we're way behind in many, many comparisons. Competitiveness, um, Cost of doing business, the latest 2017 report, we're 147 out of 190 countries. Excuse me, you think you're going to attract investments? You're way behind. Investment is about having an environment where people feel their, their capital is safe, where they can bring wealth, invest in, 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 in technology, in new businesses, so you can have wealth creation and prosperity in your country. If you're 147, it means you're way behind. People choose another location. So when people tell me they've done well, I say to a certain extent, yes, but yes, but not as much as they could do or should do to take us to the next level where we should be. And that's the point. That next level where we need to be to address the budgeting population, to address the deepening poverty. Inflation is at 20% in April. It is now 18%. The exchange rate is expected to devalue. And now we are at about 7,600. The projection from the IMF and the Economist Intelligence Unit is that it will be 8,000 something. If inflation is 18% now, what would it be next year? So when people say things are good, I say that is superficial. Let us dig deeper. And that is part of the problem with African transformation. We do a little bit of cosmetic stuff, we think we are in heaven. 